The Japanese government still won't allow many residents near the Fukushima plant back into areas of high radiation. Yet the Environment Ministry has started trial decontaminations in these no-go zones. Officials have designated parts of seven municipalities near the plant as unsuitable for living due to radiation over 50 millisieverts per year. The government has delayed major cleanup operations in these areas in fear of exposing people to radiation. However, ministry personnel have begun trials in five areas to find out how much can be removed. That work will continue until the end of the year. The ministry wants to determine cleanup costs. It will also study ways to control any radiation workers are exposed to. After these steps, officials say they can decide on how to decontaminate the zones. Oyster growers in Iwate Prefecture are sending shellfish to the market for the first time since the area's coastline was devastated by the tsunami disaster in 2011. Oyster growers working along the coast in Old Funato City have rebuilt processing plants and restored their oyster beds. Tanks that eliminate harmful bacteria with ultraviolet light have been replaced. This allows oysters to be delivered in the shell to be eaten raw. This year is a beginning. I want to increase the shipments next year as the business takes off. 450 boxes, each containing 20 to 40 oysters, were transported to the Tokyo area on Monday. Contamination is also affecting exports. Japan's fisheries head wants South Korea to lift a ban on marine products from Fukushima and other prefectures. The South imposed the ban in response to leaks at the nuclear plant. The chief of the National Federation of Fisheries Cooperative Associations, Hiroshi Kishi, delivered a written request to the South Korean ambassador to uh, Japan's uh, Ibyong-gi uh, in Tokyo. It uh, noted that Japanese uh, marine products must meet radiation safety standards before they can be exported. The request says the ban is based on weak scientific evidence. Kishi said the government needs to understand the real situation. We want South Korea to lift the embargo as soon as possible. We will continue to request that they end it. Japanese officials say the South Korean ambassador said his government sees the leaks as a major accident, and this has created fear in his country. The people in charge of Fukushima Daiichi say they've detected radioactive material in water outside the port at the nuclear plant. Workers with Tokyo Electric Power Company found cesium in a sample taken outside a breakwater, about a kilometer off the coast. This is the first time workers have detected radioactive material in that area. TEPCO officials say they measured 1.4 becquerels per liter of cesium-137 in the sample. They say the level is lower than the safety standard for drinking water set by the World Health Organization, 10 becquerels per liter. The team took the sample on Tuesday. They say they did not detect cesium in another sample taken on Thursday. Workers started checking the water in that area in August after they found contaminated groundwater had been seeping into the ocean. Nuclear regulators in Japan will soon be getting international support in their effort to monitor the impact the Fukushima Daiichi crisis is having on the ocean. Specialists with the UN's nuclear watchdog will join teams checking radiation levels in the waters off the damaged facility. Monitoring radioactivity in seawater is very important. So the IAEA would like to cooperate with the Japanese authority. IAEA chief Yukiya Amano offered the assistance to the head of Japan's nuclear regulation authority, Shuichi Tanaka. Tanaka says working together would help alleviate concerns among neighboring countries. Officials with the authority have been testing seawater in different locations in Fukushima Daiichi's port. They say radiation levels are below the government safety standard, but a series of contaminated water leaks has sparked more concern among people in Japan and abroad. South Korea recently banned imports of marine products from Fukushima a prefecture and elsewhere in Japan. IAEA officials say figures obtained and released by Japanese officials alone 
would not convince people the country's seafood is safe. The IAEA plans to send a team of specialists in mid-November to study how to carry out the joint monitoring. After the Fukushima nuclear disaster in 2011, dairy farmers over a wide area had to suspend operations or even shut them down. Their pasture land had been contaminated by radioactive fallout. But in this report, we meet a farmer who is determined to reclaim what the disaster took away. NHK World's Kayoko Tamaki reports. The contamination of this farm began last month. It is less than 90 kilometers from Fukushima Daiichi power plant. Masahiro Yamakawa owns the farm. The work has finally started, though we've run up against so many difficulties. Before the disaster, Yamakawa let his 30 cows graze freely. They ate grass in the woods. Milk from this diet has a different taste and composition every season. This milk made Yamakawa proud. I love this landscape. The cows in the forest. Not only the cows, but also the natural surroundings. It's precious to me. But after the nuclear disaster, radiation contaminated the foliage and soil at higher levels than the government limit. Yamakawa stopped the grazing, then weeds overran the forest. He didn't know when the grazing could restart, so he had to let his employees go. He hasn't used his milking equipment in more than two years. Yamakawa almost gave up farming, but other farmers talked him out of it. A local farmer, Hayato Sakuma, took care of his cows. He also milked them after making sure the feed was not contaminated. I'm not helping him per se. We're trying to survive together, looking for ways to go on together. Yamakawa avoided closing his farm by selling the milk and selling a creamy dessert at his farm cafe. Gradually, customers have come back. His sales are 80% of what they were before the earthquake. Nice! First, Yamakawa had to decontaminate his land. He thought he might be able to leave the trees and remove only the soil and ground vegetation. But small equipment needed for the job would cost over $200,000. So Yamakawa had to cut down his cherished woods. It was a bitter decision. The topsoil held radioactive substances that contaminated the grass. He and Sakuma removed it. The underlying earth became the new surface. They treated it with potassium to absorb radioactivity. Yamakawa wants 40% of the forest cleaned up for now, and his cows grazing in the spring. You really should not give up. There were many times when I was about to. The most important thing was that I didn't. Now I'm determined to bring my cows out here and let them graze again. What I really want to do is regrow the forest and make another outstanding farm. Yamakawa yearns to bring back the good old days when his cows were free to roam and their milk was his pride and joy. Kayoko Tamaki, NHK World, Nasu. Scientists in Japan are now able to move ahead with research into how the nuclear accident has affected a top-level predator in the Pacific. Last week, we told you about the study involving bluefin tuna and samples from the U.S. that couldn't get through Japanese customs. Well, since our report, authorities have released those samples. NHK World's Yoichiro Tateiwa has the story. Professor Hideo Yamazaki at Kinki University is happy to get down to work. He waited six months to receive bluefin tuna samples 
from his colleagues in the U.S. The samples come from 20 bluefin tuna caught off California between May and August of last year. Researchers at Stanford University studied the same fish and said they detected low levels of radioactive cesium. They concluded the source of the contamination was a nuclear accident at the Fukushima Daiichi plant. Professor Yamazaki proposed a joint survey of bluefin tuna on both sides of the Pacific. The Stanford scientists sent the samples. But customs officials in Japan put them on ice. They said they needed proper documentation. However, a few days after NHK World reported on the holdup, the officials released the samples, saying they now recognize that they are for scientific purposes. Now, Yamazaki and his team will analyze the tissue to measure the levels of cesium. Yamazaki notes the contamination is too low to threaten humans. He says people would face no risks even if they ate the samples. He's studying fish that migrate across the ocean to understand how radioactive particles spread in the environment. The tuna could have been contaminated off the coast of Japan. They could have also absorbed radioactive substance that traveled across the Pacific. I can think of numerous processes of contamination. We need to do a detailed study to find out exactly what is happening. Bluefin tuna spend their juvenile period in Japan's coastal waters. Then, they take between one and four months to migrate to the west coast of the United States. This kind of joint study on the effects of the Fukushima accident in the Pacific is still unique. I hope this will spawn more international cooperation in the future. Yamazaki says scientists on both sides of the Pacific need to share samples and information and look into as many angles as possible to fully understand the consequences of the nuclear accident. Yoichiro Tateiwa, NHK World. Villagers near Fukushima Daiichi have high hopes for a harvest. They're picking a test batch of rice to see if it's safe to resume commercial farming. Residents of Itate village took part in the project. They planted the rice in a part of the village deemed uninhabitable due to high radiation levels. Residents have been unable to live there since the 2011 nuclear accident. Farmers removed the paddy's topsoil last year and they planted the seeds in June. I'm happy to harvest rice for the first time. In three years, some people in my district said they felt healed when they saw the paddy with rice stalks. Officials will test the rice for radioactive substances. They'll discard the sample crop regardless of results. Itate's mayor says he hopes the test will show farming can get back on track even in uninhabitable areas. The Japanese government has lent billions of dollars in compensation money to the operator of the disabled Fukushima nuclear plant. Officials now estimate it'll take decades to recover it. The government has issued about $50 billion worth of bonds to Tokyo Electric Power Company. The money is being used to compensate people who've had to evacuate their homes and farmers and fishermen who've lost their livelihoods. The government plans to recover the funds through an annual payback by TEPCO and contributions from other nuclear power companies. But the Board of Audit says if TEPCO remains in the red, it does not expect to be paid back until 2044. Even if the utility's profits improve, the funds would not be fully recovered until 2030. 
The Board of Audit expects the need for government assistance will increase further as demand for decontamination and real estate compensation increases. Japanese government officials say a ban on seafood from the area is unfair. Their South Korean counterparts are worried about leaks of radioactive water from the plant. So last month, they stopped imports of marine products from Fukushima and neighboring prefectures. Japanese delegates made the argument at a World Trade Organization meeting in Geneva. They said there's no scientific basis for the embargo. They said maritime products undergo radiation checks to make sure they meet government standards before being shipped overseas. I believe many countries now understand Japan's view. South Korean officials say they need to ensure the safety of food products. They demanded that the Japanese provide them with more detailed information. The South Koreans say they also want to help monitor radioactivity off Fukushima Daiichi. Foreign Minister Yoon byun se discussed the plan in Seoul with the head of the International Atomic Energy Agency, Yukia Amano. Inspectors from the IAEA and Japan's Nuclear Regulation Authority plan to work together to check whether the waters off the plant are safe, and the South Koreans want to take part. The Japanese government is urging the private sector to help make the country more tourist-friendly ahead of the 2020 Olympics and Paralympics in Tokyo. More than 300 people took part in a meeting organized by the tourism agency. They were related to the travel, hotel, and transport industries. The agency commissioner Shigeto Kubo said the public and private sectors should take the Olympics as a golden opportunity to cooperate. We believe we need to make efforts step by step to make our country more friendly to foreign visitors. Officials from the Agency and Transport Ministry called for support in providing multilingual signboards at tourist and transport facilities. They also asked for setting up more information centers for foreign tourists and zones that allow visitors free access to Wi-Fi. The agency hopes that Tokyo's successful bid to host the Olympics will enable Japan to reach a goal of attracting 20 million foreign visitors annually. The International Atomic Energy Agency has presented the result of its week-long study in Fukushima to Japan's government. The UN nuclear watchdog said the government's one millisievert decontamination goal cannot be achieved soon and advised the government to communicate more with the public to get a more realistic view of radiation and related risks. NHK World's Noriko Okada reports. The disaster at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant in March 2011 spread radioactive substances over eastern Japan. The government ordered more than 80,000 residents in Fukushima prefecture to evacuate as they were living in areas where radiation levels exceeded 20 millisievert per year. The government is conducting decontamination work to lower the levels. The IAEA did the research in Fukushima this month at the request of Japan's government. Inspectors checked the progress of the decontamination and made a preliminary report. The agency said the work was progressing well, but the one millisievert goal cannot be achieved soon through decontamination alone. It stressed that the government should try to explain to the public that an individual radiation dose from 1 to 20 millisievert per year is in line with the international standards. It suggested that we are locating resources to the recovery of essential infrastructure would benefit the public and that more effort is needed to monitor individual dose to decide on decontamination. You have to select the appropriate value of protection, level of protection, in the range from 1 to 20 millisievert for these specific uh, existing exposure situations. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll take a picture. Japan's government did not specify how it would reflect the advice in its policies. The government will continue working on the decontamination process along with reconstruction efforts. We also want to deepen our relationship 
with the international community, including the IAEA, by releasing relevant information. Many residents have been asking the government to achieve the one millisievert level as soon as possible. The IAEA says the balance between benefits and burdens should be considered. Noriko Okada, NHK World, Tokyo. Managers of Japan's crippled nuclear plant say they've detected radioactive cesium a kilometer off the coast. It's the second time they've found the substance that far out at sea. But they say the levels are very low and won't affect the environment. Workers with Tokyo Electric Power Company, or TEPCO, have been analyzing seawater at five locations off Kushima Daichi. They took a sample on Friday and found that it contained 1.6 becquerels per liter of cesium-137. TEPCO officials say that's well below the safety standard for drinking water set by the World Health Organization, which is 10 becquerels per liter. Workers also found cesium at the location two weeks ago. The officials say they can't explain why the substance is present there, but almost non-existent elsewhere, outside the plant's harbor. They're planning to install devices that can check radiation levels offshore at all times. Japan's chefs could soon find their work endorsed by the United Nations. Members of a UNESCO committee have recommended that Japan's culinary arts be designated an intangible cultural heritage asset. UNESCO is expected to endorse the decision on, in December. Japan's Cultural Affairs Agency proposed adding the country's food culture to the list of heritage assets. Agency officials said the recipes, tableware, and other culinary arts are a fundamental part of Japanese culture. The officials say they hope UNESCO recognition will be a boost for businesses hit by concerns about food safety since the 2011 nuclear accident. UNESCO currently recognizes four food cultures, French, Turkish, Mexican, and a Mediterranean. A Japanese research team says most of the radioactive cesium that fell on the forest floor after the accident at the Fukushima plant is still in the same place. Researchers from the Japan Atomic Energy Agency installed monitoring equipment in woods in Ibaraki near Fukushima Prefecture in May 2011. It was two months after the accident. They hoped to learn f how cesium moves from fallen leaves to soil. The results showed that rain washed it off leaves six months after the accident. The researchers say that as the leaves decomposed, the cesium moved into the soil. In two years of research, they say that only about 0.1 to 0.2 percent has reached a depth of 10 centimeters. The results suggest that the cesium has not penetrated deep into the ground. I believe the findings will be useful in efforts to decontaminate affected areas. They concluded it's unlikely that underground water probably has carried radioactive cesium from the soil to nearby areas. Tokyo Electric Power Company is expected to post about $1.1 billion in profits for the April to September period. It will be the company's first midterm profit since the Fukushima nuclear crisis began in 2011. TEPCO officials hiked household rates last September. Profits rose as electricity sales surged during this summer's record heat wave. The officials also made spending cuts that included putting off repair work at other power plants and transmission facilities. TEPCO aims to post a profit for the full business year that ends March of 2014. But the officials will continue to face massive compensation costs related to the nuclear accident. They'll also need to decommission the damaged reactors and process contaminated wastewater at the Fukushima plant. They now want to restart two reactors at the Kashiwazaki Kariwa complex in Niigata prefecture to boost earnings. But regulators have yet to start safety screening procedures. Cleaning up communities around the damaged plant has been a major challenge for Japanese leaders. Cabinet ministers say the government should bear part of the cost, which could be billions of dollars. Central and local governments are carrying out decontamination work. So far, it's Tokyo Electric Power Company, the plant operator, that's covering the expenses. TEPCO executives are now asking the government to contribute toward the massive cost. Industry Minister Toshimitsu Motegi said accelerating the cleanup work is crucial for Fukushima Prefecture to recover quickly. 
The government is studying the matter comprehensively, including the financial issue. Finance Minister Taro Aso said the government is responsible for the problem. The government has long promoted nuclear energy as a national policy, so I think it's unfair to blame only TEPCO for the nuclear accident. Also said the government should discuss financial support with the governing Liberal Democratic Party.